<laughs> All right. Um, how many of you have done any public service or emergency communications work already? Rebecca, put your hand down. You look up the dictionary, you see her picture on the public service. Yeah, right? Uh, can I get those hands again? What? What? So, okay. All right. It gives me an idea of the audience I'm talking to tonight. So, um, my name is Peter. I've been licensed for about 30 years. Actually, it'll be 30 years this uh, this summer. Um, I started as a novice and upgraded to tech in 91 and so forth. So that's all the stuff I do. For those that are looking to upgrade, come down and see us at Cliff Cave every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Um, and we'll uh, we'll get your upgrades done and everything. So anybody know what the definition of public services? Got an idea? Come on. If anybody has been in my classes, you know I ask a lot of questions of you guys. Well, any of those fit the bill? Were you supplying a commodity such as electric or gas or a service to any or all members of a community? That kind of sounds right on par, doesn't it? And what about services rendered in the public interest? Yeah? Fair assessment. All right. So what about uh, what about a uh, communications emergency? What what defines that? This is a question on the MCOM test too. So anybody know? Well, the traditional well, networks go down. Sure. What happens when that happens? Ninety-nine yeah. percent of people can't talk to each other. Okay. And what does that cause? Chaos. Well, besides the chaos, what? There's another word I'm looking for that. Anxiety. Disruption. Sure, disruption. Uh, if you were to evaluate your situation, what would you call that? Okay. <laughs> Out of the book, the textbook answer is. A critical communi communication failure puts the public at risk. Not necessarily an inconvenience, which is one of the te wrong test answers. Um, so it's, it's when a communications failure puts the public at risk. That's where ham radio stuff steps in because we fill that gap. Um, anybody read uh, CFR Part 47? Actually, Title 47, Part 97, where we fall into play. Do you remember what it says? No. A lot of gobbledygook, right? But there's one important item to remember out of Part 97. We are mandated by FCC reg as a recognition and enhancement of the value of amateur service to the public as a voluntary non-commercial communication service particularly with respect to providing emergency communications. Okay? We've got some big roles to fill, big shoes to fill. So, as far as emergency communications goes, they may or may not involve hams and non-hams, if anybody's worked in emergency communications or public service. You know, when we do the bike rides, we have... Um, we have the folks that we're, we're supporting, like the MS-150 folks. And so we're working as hams with other non-hams and working on, you know, getting messages back and forth. And in an emergency, that stuff typically happens in real time, as opposed to public service where, yes, it's happening in real time, but unless there is an emergency, Don, this is where you ring the bell. Okay? So unless there's a bell ring and Rebecca goes, ah! You know, then, then we, we've moved from, you know, an emergency within that public service event. So, and, and emergencies are typically unplanned, little or no warning, and they may go on for several days and may have, you know, a couple of different nets going on simultaneously, and they're used to pass critical message in a limited time frame. Okay, those are all, these are all items that are in the MCOM class and that are on the, the EC001 test that we'll talk about in a, Excuse me a little bit later. Anybody know what the what why 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 do we have to have 
at an emergency communications organization. Because when an emergency occurs, it's too late to start organizing one. Yep. Why else? I mean, that's like, like the number one reason, but what, why else do we need to have some organization when we're, when we're talking about so it? So you don't have chaos when an emergency happens. Sure, yeah. But you want to be the same across all, all your, your people need to be having the same lingo and the same training. And yep, but it needs to be a unified message in there. So, again, imagine a random group of volunteers, you know, all of us, and many of you, I, I, you know, some of you I've seen at testing when you've come down and done upgrades. Others I've, I've probably talked to during the MS-150, but have probably never met you in person. So, uh, you know, imagine trying to tackle all that during a full-scale disaster or a communication emergency and, and trying to work together for the first time. So that's probably one of the steps to, you know, one of the, one of the key points to remember is that as we talk about public service, and a, a lot of this is recruiting for this, the, the bike ride stuff that, that, that's coming up this summer and everything. It's those, even those are, those are non-emergency events, those are gonna be events that you're going to gain skills with to use if and when an emergency is gonna happen. And by doing so as a group, we gather knowledge from each other know how to communicate with each other better and can recognize those little things that help us to hear and speak to get the message out. So the MCOM organization itself, we, you know, the, the ARIES group here, and we'll talk about this you know, upcoming here, um, they provide the training and we develop the workable solutions in advance of the real disaster in the form of uh, memorandums of understanding with our served agencies. There are eight. There may be more now, but I, I believe there's still eight um, MOUs that the ARIES group has with different agencies here in town. And we'll go, I'll show you on the website where to find that information at and everything. So, you know, we're talking like um, St. Louis County Emergency Communications Center, um, St. Louis County Police, the Department of Health, the Red Cross, uh, uh, VA, and um, I'm trying to remember all eight of them off the top of my head. Anyway, they're out there. So know that we have those MOUs in place, which are basically um, the, the, this is what we expect of you, this is what we expect of them, this is how we're gonna work together if you guys should call us up and, and we need something to happen. So from your standpoint, as new people, you know, either new hams or such, that are looking to get into this sort of thing, um, you're going to want to stay involved with SLSRC, with the public service events that go on that they promote, and you're going to want to slide in on some of the area stuff and grab some of the additional training that we do that's more specialized towards um, the, the events that are happening. So think of Aries as your, your, your knowledge pool. Think of the public service events as your training. Is, is probably one way to do it. And, and Aries does, you know, we do our own training stuff too, but there is really good real world examples of, of applications of taking it out of the emergency environment and putting it in towards public service. Cliff? Hey, Rebecca can tell more stories than I can, but one rest stop I was at, uh, I don't know, five or six years ago, there was an accident. And one of the bikers got hit, we had to shut the rest stop down. Mm -hmm. I, heard secondhand that they had the helicopter maybe or ambulance. I mean that was that was quick just like that. Yeah. It was not emergency communication for me, but when you got two hundred bike riders that you gotta make happy <laughs> you say you can't go on the course right. without an accident there and sorry you know, vehicles are coming by. It, it was it was on the spot training. Yeah. So um, in order to do all that, in addition to the classroom stuff and the boring you know, take the test stuff and all this other things, you, you got to have some equipment and some other resources. So tell me what you guys think you need to have laying around to do public service and emergency communications. Radio and paper. Oh, you need, yeah, I need radio, right? So what else? Portability of your radio. 
Sure. What else? Yeah. Power. Yeah. So power in the form of what? Yeah. Did I hear who? Solar? I did hear solar. Okay. Anything else? What else you need? <laughs> I'm surprised nobody's put one. I'm waiting for Norm to maybe put one of those together. You know, if anybody knows Norm, he... Then Dolores would want him to ride it for the day. And then, yeah. He's still working on his flux capacitor. Yeah, yeah, he probably is. You need to know what frequencies you're going to be on. Thank you, yes. You so, have the frequency plan. Yeah, you need to know what frequencies in the frequency plan. You're going to, where, where are you going to find that information at? You're going to have it ahead of time because that's why you have meetings. Right? <laughs> right? In a public service event, yeah. You're going to have those briefings ahead of time to know where Rebecca expects you guys to be. Um, what about an emergency? Where am I going to find that info? In the how do you know what station to check into? That's where Aries comes in. Their oh! <laughs> See how this all kind of gets back together? Yeah. We, we did a, there was a big earthquake drill probably about five years ago mm -hmm. with the NLE. And uh, where I work at, we have a uh, emergency communications group there. Uh, uh, resilient, the Resilient Communications Team. Uh-huh. And uh, what we had done was uh, on 40 meter and on 20 meters, we said, had, okay, if it's between this time and this time, and with like 15 minute blocks, try this frequency. This time and this time, try this frequency, so we could find a good open frequency to. to Is this on HF or on? This on, on HF. Yeah, we were yeah. To so. Okay, between our office here and our office out in the DC area. Right. So. That brings up an interesting point because you're working for a company, right? And you're getting paid to do that. So hang on. So how does that how does that happen? How is that legal? How does that fall under the regs? On or on emergency drills. Mm-hmm. The, the loophole that says, well, and for a while they were having you fill out a form, but it got too daunting for the FCP to deal with the form, so they finally said, okay, if you're working for an agency that, right. that, and, that uses emergency communications, this and, is a drill, you, and, can, you can get paid. And so what, what type of traffic are you allowed to pass between one company location that generates revenue and another company location that generates revenue. Oh, we don't generate revenue. You don't? No, we're the government, we take revenue. <laughs> right. <laughs> we spend, we don't. Right. So are you doing that on the, as part of the government stuff, are you doing that on the shares? On, um, on, on the, on the, on the, not, the not yet. We're, uh, we're working on getting shares in Mars okay. uh, activated okay. in our, our systems. Okay. So, so folks, understand that there are other ways that ham radio resources end up getting used in different applications. You know, so we, we talk about the bike rides as being the big thing here, um, the 100 acre wood rally, the race car, event, you know, the road rally uh, down south. We talk about. Um, The, the emergency agencies that we work with and the information that we work with them. So you might find a niche that you might want to get into to do stuff with. So be aware that, that, that even though you've got your license and you've got some gear, and we need to talk more about gear because I, I, I want to hear some more about what you guys might have available um, to take out in the field with you and such. So, um, we talked about the radios, the antennas, the power. What else do we need? Office supplies. Yeah, what else? Food, water. Uh, I'm thinking even even before all that. What else? The manual for your radio. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Training. Before that. You gotta practice. Before that. A license. A, license. a darn license, right? Don't 
It's an emergency. You don't need the license. For the love of God, please don't forget to bring your license with you. Okay? And and it 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 it, it slips our minds because now we get it electronically, we get it on a PDF, we might have it on our phone, whatever. If your phone runs out of battery juice during an emergency and you can't present me a license, I don't know you. I don't know the, your skills. I don't know what your class is. I can't use you. Okay? So there's a, there's, there's a reason why they provide us the 5x7 version to hang on the wall and the wallet version to stuff in your wallet. So please, especially the new folks that, that haven't been in the hobby where they used to mail us the nice pretty parchment paper copy that you would cut out and look forward to and laminate and keep in your wallet, you know. So please do that because, you know, I carry mine with me on all the stuff that, you know, all the ideas we end up having around just in case I get challenged and somebody says, what's your license? So please, how many of you have, a license, have the license on you right now? Fantastic. <laughs> how many of you have a, at least a copy of it in the glove box of the car? Yeah, we got it on. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there's a good spot to stuff it, somewhere where you never look again. Maybe in with the rest of the parking tickets you get. But yeah, keep a copy. Of, keep keep several copies of it in your uh, glove box. Um, Good for upgrade. Yeah, exactly. You know, because we we kept copies in the glove box, and then we went to Peoria, and you're like, hey, I'm going to take my general, and I'm like, hey, let's that copy your extra. Oh, your extra, yeah. <laughs> um, and so we, you know, they're there. So you never know. Maybe you get the. Uh, Maybe you get the urge to take a test at a ham fest and all of a sudden you don't have your license with you. So, so do keep a signed copy of it in your glove box as well, no matter what. Um, anything else? Any other equipment? We talk, well now we've got office supplies, power, radio. What else? A bell. A bell, yes. Do bring a bell. I'm a big fan of a chair myself. Sure. What else? Depends how long the deployment is, but you need medications with you. That's a good. That's a good point. A lot of us yeah. forget about that. Medication. Yeah. Food. Yep. Yeah. Food. Transportation. Yeah. What else? Are you talking emergency or? I'm talking whatever. I'm talking if you want to go play with, with Becca and all of us out at 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 at, at the bike ride. Well, that's and, and I know you guys can speak from what, what occurs on the bike rides. What what often happens? We, we What's that? Spare, spare radio is a good option. We set up cross band because, you know, you needed to be able to reach, make contact with the further. Sure. So we got all this equipment with us, right? We got all these radios. I got my spare radios. I got my power. I got my antennas. Sunscreen and bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, a small van. I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking more like how are you gonna fix it when it breaks. Toolkit. Yeah. Right? We we we've all completely left that one out. What happens if you bust a connector? What happens if you gotta put some coax somewhere? Should be, but nobody brought it up yet. <laughs> right. So, so that's why I'm asking. You know, what what is in your kit that you're gonna that you're gonna take with you? You know, and a lot of us forget that. You know, throw a soldering iron in there. Throw a couple of extra connectors in there, and and you know, don't don't forget about that stuff. Even for, um, you know, the bike ride deployments or or what have you. You know, we've got the sag vans that come around and work on the bikes, but I don't know that we have. Uh, a communications mechanic laying around, do we? We did this last year. Yeah, we did. <laughs> the big van full of. Well, <laughs> I, I mean, they. So this last year, I had a radial failure with bike MS, and managed to communicate. They knew that I was having problems with the radio. I pull up to a rest stop, which is where we had the um, portable tower. So we had a couple of hands there. They had spare radios available. So they literally drove my vehicle away around the building, uninstalled and installed 
a backup radio, and then drove my vehicle back to me. They did not wash it. I did try to. <laughs> I mean, it was pretty good service, and I gotta commend them for that. Some, some of the areas we've been in, you better carry your handgun concealed carry permit. I'm glad somebody brought that up. I won't say yes or no to it, due to whatever, you know, wherever we might be sitting at. Be careful. Is all I gotta say. You know, watch where you're walking into, watch what property you're on, watch all that stuff. Because um, that 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 is something that we forget about. Those of us that do that, um, you know, we have to be careful about that stuff. And that's a very good point. And we, we we talk about that in the MCOM class too, because that's that's a relatively new. Um, I won't say a problem because I, I've not yet heard of it being a problem for anybody, but it's, it's definitely a concern both for us and our survey agencies that we work with because- Our first, our first call out this, this past spring, uh, we were set up a kitchen in the parking lot, Donovan, two houses straight in front of our tent kitchen, pow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm part of the O'Fallon CERT, uh -huh. and so I'm part of their HAM organization within that group. Yep. When we're operating, we actually represent the city, so we're not authorized. That's right. Even though I'm a CCW. That's right. Everything. So you have to know. Right. It's, it's just an extra layer for those that have that to worry about. And unless you know for sure. Making sure that you're not operating as a representative of somebody. Well, in, in right, because case. ham radio itself, there's nothing that specifically prevents you, but <clears throat> if you're walking into an agency's building, you need to be aware of what's right. the same what's there. That you and would have to follow anyway. Correct. Mm -hmm. And and so it really becomes a best judgment thing. Um, my feeling is leave it locked up in the vehicle. That that's just the easiest way to, to do it. Because we're not we're not and, and from an airy side, we're not gonna send you into a situation where you're really gonna need it per se, you know? But again it's it's that it it's just something that, that, you, that has to come up to and that we talk about and everything. Through, uh, laws too. Hmm? You need to know the state you're going to laws yes. and everything yep. too. Yep. Be very careful if you have a concealed carry, which you don't really need in Missouri, and you go to Illinois. That's right. And you're carrying that weapon. Mm -hmm. Because if you get out of your car with that weapon on you. You're no you longer traveling drive. through. Yeah, that's right. right. You can drive through the state, but you cannot get out of the car with it. Yep. And you, supposedly, you cannot take that gun out of the car into the hotel room. Mm -hmm. You yeah. have to leave it in the mm -hmm. car, which... People, if people know that, which everybody in Illinois does, and they see you, and they know you have one, they know where it is, yeah. it's in your car. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Any other equipment yeah, sure. ideas that we didn't talk about? Radios, antennas, power, manual, documentation, office supplies, food, water, medication. Seems pretty okay to me, right? All right, so on the opportunity side. So the bike ride stuff is over there. So if you want to do the MS-150, get a hold of Rebecca. Um, Tour to Cure, Al Geist takes care of that one now. The Lupus ride, Steve Wooten. Anybody, uh, there's field day stuff there. And then we'll, we'll go through these links here at the bottom and such back to those so upcoming classroom training stuff we talked about the need for um, you know being trained to do a, some of the MCOM stuff and a lot of the public service things benefit from the same training so in March uh, every Saturday in March there 3rd 10th 17th and 24th um, I'm teaching the class on that from 8 to noon and that's at Missouri Baptist West County here um, 
and you know, one of the requirements uh, in order to sit and take the test is going to be the ICS 100 and the, the IS 700 course there from FEMA. And I don't know if you guys have been out to their uh, independent study website, but there's a whole bunch of things that you can take out there um, for that. But but specifically for the the, the ARRL's uh, introduction to emergency communications course, you have to have the 100 and the 700 done. For additional area stuff, we like it if you also have the, I, the, the 200 and the 800 courses done. And we talked about that in the class coming up in March here and things. So if you're looking to do that, and we'll, again, I'll show you the website where you can go to here and look those courses up and take them. They're, you know, keep in mind, they're, they're delivered by FEMA. So they are incredibly boring. They're incredibly dry. Um, and, and, you know, they're, they're teaching people at, 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 at like a third grade level. So don't take offense if it, if it comes pretty easy and basic to you, but at least know that, you know, and we'll, we'll go over where you can get that stuff at there. So other details on the intro uh, class there. Um, we cover six sections. Um, if you know that uh, AWRL uh, no longer publishes the fourth edition book because they're getting ready to release some new material, when, who knows? Um, the book uh, stopped being printed uh, last fall and I have yet to get a reply back from ARRL that says here's when the fifth edition books going to be available so until then um, I've got PDF copies of the book that ARRL has said yeah you can hand these out to folks so don't worry about getting material for the class I'll have it for you by them not having a book works out really well because you save about 30 bucks in the cost of the book that I will now provide you for free in PDF. So some of the, 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 the six sections that, that we talk about in there is basically the framework and that's how you fit into things. I didn't really want to go into that tonight and bore everybody with that because there's a whole lot that on how that happens in the structure. Um, but we also then we go over different networks for getting messages in and out, how to handle those messages properly, and again, what happens when you're called, how you're going to get called, where are you going to go to listen to, what frequencies might we be using, those sort of things. Um, other considerations, like we talked about the equipment needs, your own personal needs, things like that. And then alternatives and opportunities for um, other income stuff as well. And then in April, uh, is it 23rd meeting? Is it? Friday the 23rd? I think so. I is that the next SLSRC meeting? I have a bill in front of me. February 23rd. 20, is it 23rd? Yeah. Okay, so the next meeting I'm doing a class, uh, a presentation on WinLink, um, and then I do a another class on April 28th um, in a lot more detail about it. I'm not going to hammer everybody with this is how it all works, you know, or we'll go over how it works, but I'm not going to have, you know, spend a whole lot of time boring people with the uh, the actual um, uh, setup and, and all that stuff with it and everything. April 27th. So, sorry? April is 27th. Did you say April? 28th, which should be a Saturday. Oh, Saturday, I'm sorry. Yeah, Saturday, April 28th. Yeah, I'm sorry. But we'll, we'll, we're going we're gonna to discuss this uh, in, in kind of real high level. There'll be a 20-minute a video at, at uh, the SLSRC uh, meeting coming up and everything that it will go over WinLink and such as one of the tools that we use in MCOM um, to send and receive messages back and forth. Anybody, anybody know what WinLink is? One, two, three. Good, great. So I'll know what to uh, I'll know what to put together for the uh, the presentation then on that one. So other training we talked about. Uh, Mark mentioned uh, CERT and everything. So that's your community emergency response team. Those folks are generally organized by local fire departments. Not every fire department around here has one. Melville is just darn too busy to worry about putting one together. Webster so, Rose uh, trains you, but then doesn't. You're on your own. Right. So um, if you have the opportunity to do this sort of training, I, I, I highly recommend it. I did mine. 
Jeez, what is it now, 2018? I did mine about 13 years ago when I worked for AT&T downtown. And they actually had uh, team members on every floor of the old tower down there had cert training. Um, and, and we worked with the City Emergency Management Agency on that one as part of uh, AT&T's business continuity program. Um, anybody do the Oxcom class? Raise your hand, yeah, right. All right, so Missouri doesn't have any of this yet. They're working on it, maybe this year, probably next. Um, if that opportunity comes up, do do that one as well. Um, Illinois has been offering that, which is where uh, Rebecca and Bill and Brian and myself uh, went to do that class. And it's a, it's a good overview, and it, it, there's a lot of the intro to MCOM class rolled into the Oxcom one, but this one is more gets into more details on how we fit into a structure if, if we're called out by a government agency or such. Um, and then obviously the FEMA independent study courses, which we'll go back to those websites here and take a look here. Um, anybody have any questions? What, what class do you have to have to uh, be in any of the classes? Oh, a, a, like a license class? No, you can do it as a technician or general or extra. If you have an amateur radio license, I guarantee you, Becca can, or Rebecca can put you to work on the public service side of things, and I can put you to work on the emergency radio side of things. So as long as you got, long as you got a, a license, I don't care if you're a tech, I don't care if you're a general, I don't care if you're an extra. I'll find you, I'll give you some work to do, you know. Um, if you and don't those, have a license, you can always be a runner. Right, and and there's some some po folks get a license and they just don't want to be on the radio, you know. No so I'll I'll find you a job, you know. You could sit and log. You can run messages. You could. There are there are so many opportunities for me to put you to work if you want to if you want to volunteer and, and and go to work. So um, the FEMA website. Really? <laughs> Am I out? Oh, I'm not on that. The government's been shut down for several minutes. Yeah. A couple I don't know that anybody's read the bill, have they? Yeah. 700 some pages, or I don't remember what it is, but. It's all right. Did you know that? They go home. I'm not sure that you're on Shut it down. Try again. Hard to do from this angle. So when you hey, say you know, uh, hey. West County, are you talking about West County, BJC West County? Yeah, right down on Olive. I've never heard. I work for BJC. I've never heard that called Mobat West County. West well, County. I'm sorry. Yeah, BJC West. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Uh, I sat yeah. there. I thought, God, we brought another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, no, uh, BJC West is where, where we where Aries does the, what's that? It's, it's Barnes Jewish Hospital West. Right, B, B -W -C. Right. Right. Orange, Orange, right. You know what? <laughs> the St. Anthony's by me is something else now, too. It will still be St. Anthony's, so. Yeah. Yeah. But it was never BJC. <laughs> Whatever. We'll get into that discussion later. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> Look at the MOU. You can see how it's spelled out. Yeah, <laughs> and we will. I'll show you where to find that at. So. There's, there's, there's the quick links for the one, the two, uh, there's the seven, help me out here, there's the eight, okay, so those are the four that I'm really looking for you to do and bore yourself with, if you happen to get home and you find trouble sleeping, <laughs> fire one of those bad boys up, um, it, it won't take long to get through it. Two, three um, nights up, yeah. <laughs> right? Six, three hours, but not that short. Hour. Yeah, the yeah when you it yeah if we if we click on one of these here, and it will give you somewhere around the right here. Help me out. Yeah, somewhere. Oh, there we go. First like three hours. Yeah, don't don't pay attention to that. Again, you know, what does a hammer cost to the federal government? The five thousand dollar hammer, right? So their time they, they like to bill extra 
Well, so, we have to include the southern states for that. Right. <laughs> Wow. So that's the third grader that takes a while. To yeah, read. I don't think right. I'm sitting behind so, <laughs> so to just, just it should be out there at hello training.fema.gov. It'll be the spot you can go to. But one, two, seven, and eight are what I what I want to want to see it see you do. Yeah, you register, you have to register. Number you to get that test. number. When yes. You register, yep. And that's yours for life. That's correct. Yeah, you will get a FEMA ID that they record all that stuff on and all those goodies and everything. And then then you can print out your transcript and that's more material that I'm going to use to keep track of who you are and what your training is and and all that good stuff. I, did I see a hand or not? Ah, yes, that. Yeah, one of them. Yep. All right. So the, on the Aries side of things, there we go. All right. So stlaries.org. Where's my mouse? Hello. Oh, well. So that's the website for the for Aries folks. So if you want to volunteer and you haven't you haven't signed up yet, there should be a form right here. So you can fill that out at home. And that's basically the information that we're going to look for. You don't have to have all this stuff to participate. Just tell me what you got. Because like I said, I guarantee you we can use it somewhere. <clears throat> And most of the stuff locally is, is, is VHF and UHF, so that we, uh, uh, and, and, and pretty much all new hams at least have a VHF, UHF radio. Even if you got a handheld, I can still stuff you somewhere in front of a bigger radio. So don't let your lack of equipment stop you from participating in the public service events and airy stuff, okay? Because... Undoubtedly, somebody's got another radio that we can get you if you need, or we'll stuff you somewhere that that will we'll have an adequate radio for what you what, what you're going to be doing. And so that's that's the form you can fill out. Just put all the info in there, and we're going to ask you if you've had any of those classes. Those that have done CERT probably have the 317 done, and then that'll send that off to uh, Steve Wooten, who's the uh, the Aries Emergency Coordinator. But that's all out there on the, the front page of stlaries.org. Anybody listen to the 8-5 machine this morning, around 8 o'clock, when they were doing the Hospital Amateur Radio Network net? Yeah, I did. Uh, anybody familiar with that? Yeah. Yeah? Those that are at the hospital should know. So, there is a emergency network in place between all the hospitals here in St. Louis area and surrounding region that uh, you can also participate in if you want. And, and, and by giving you these different opportunities and making you aware of them, it allows you to decide maybe, maybe you just want to do the hospital work. Maybe you just want to do Skywarm stuff. Maybe you just want to do the bike rides and public service. Or maybe you just want to work with, you know, the, the eight agencies that we have agreements with on the area side of things. Doesn't matter to me. I just want you to be aware of what's available and what's out there for you to participate in, if that's something that you want to do. And the, the Hard Network's another one of those opportunities there. And they do uh, typically do quarterly tests at each of the hospitals, check in uh, to the net just to make sure the equipment works, and then off you go. And then on the Skywarn side of things, my mouse back here. Oh, come on. Really? I guess my link doesn't work. All right. So, stlskyward.org. That'll give you the information. I think there's a link out there for the training. I think that's what I'm looking at there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, 
So upcoming classes, you, if you read the weather service, they say you only need the class once. We recommend doing it at least once every two years, just to stay kind of current. Not that weather physics changes that much, <laughs> but I want to know that you still know how to report things properly and, and all of that. And we, we, there's a lot of folks that, um, you know, there'll be severe weather that rolls through the area and, you know, they'll tell me, oh, it's just heavy rain. I don't, I don't need to know that. Don't, don't, don't clog up the net with that information. And a lot of people assume that um, if there's a sky warning, you know, if there's, if there's warnings in the area and sky warning fires up, that there should automatically be traffic on the repeater and everybody talking and everything. And you'll learn in the MCON class that's not the case. There's only going to be discussions if there's something major going on. So be aware of that, that, that even though you may not hear a net up and running or somebody actively talking, that there most likely is still one there. And one of the things you'll learn in, in the MCOM class is uh, listening skills. Uh, you know, don't get too excited about things and, uh, and just sit back and listen first before you key up on the radio and, and start talking and stuff. Because it could be that, especially on the, on the bike ride stuff, it could be that the net control operator's busy doing something in the background that maybe you didn't hear that discussion going on on the radio because it wasn't your call sign and it wasn't important to you at the time. But one of the things that we'll, we, we, we touch in class is kind of being aware of your surroundings and that doesn't include the room that you're sitting in. It includes what's going on on the radio on that frequency that you're listening to. So if you know that, hey, the, the net control operator said they were going to step away or the net control operator said, hey, I have to take this phone call or, you know, we, we have an emergency thing going on or whatever, be aware of the situation that's going on, the frequency, as well as what's happening around you. And, and those things we, we, we talk quite a bit about. In the yeah. class, yeah, Cliff. Back to the sky, excuse me, back to the sky one of the weather class. Uh -huh. Jim, Jim Cramper, right, who is the morning coordinating meteorologist. <clears throat> he's, excuse me, he's retiring March 31st. Mm -hmm. He's been giving the classes uh, at least 15 years ago, yeah. and he is fantastic. This yep. is his last go round. I, I was at the St. Peter's one last Saturday, and I said, This is your farewell tour, just like Elton John, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I said, What's the next step? He said, well, and he went through all the steps. He said it's going to take at least nine months to get somebody in that position. But each weather service, by law, has to have that position. Now, the question is, is whoever takes Jim Cramper's place going to give the weather class, just like he does? Probably not. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. So if you haven't been to one of the classes, I strongly encourage you to go. It's, it's not only entertaining, it's very educational, and nobody will give it like Jim Cramper, in my opinion. Right. And you can go to SLSRC, there's a quick link. <clears throat> Is it all the areas too? <clears throat> I'm having trouble talking For about. For the schedule? Yeah, it's on the it's on the Skyworm page. Okay, good. Yeah. Great. So those links are out there. If you go out to uh, <laughs> NWS dot noah.gov slash lsx or whatever it is yeah, LSX. it's LSX. it's out there as well um we're up to about an hour here so so anybody got any questions well, i can tell a real quick story about the skywarn and why it's really good to know the protocol sure um i'm one of the operators out of nws during severe weather mm -hmm. and one night and actually, it was uh, the night that the uh, tornado hit the airport. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was working out there that night. So we're getting this, this report from some guy, and he's telling about this happening here, and this happening here, and this happening here. And it's like, they're all like three, four miles away from each other. And Watching like, the news. We're like, what the heck? We're doing? listening to a scanner. So, so we're, we're asking, and you know, we get on there and we ask him, you know, did you see this? What time was it and everything? And he said, well, 
I saw it on the news, and I thought you guys would like to know. Right. Yeah. 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 So, you know, being as how we are representatives of NWS while we're working out there, we can't just say, don't be a dumbass. So we have to, <laughs> have to politely tell him yeah. that the news is getting the same inf the information from us. So if you hear it on the news, we've already got it. <laughs> yep. So it's real important to know the protocol. Yeah. And so, on the air. And, and so when, when, Jim, when Jim teaches the class, he tells you what it is that he's looking for. And that's the same information that as Sky One Net Control operators, that's all they want to hear as well. You know, we don't, we don't you know, who cares if it's heavy rain? No is it flood. flooding your street? Let me know if it's flooding, you know, that sort of yeah. thing. And, 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 and you, you kind of need to know that stuff. And the only way you're going to know that stuff is if you go to some of the training opportunities that are out there for that um, and such. Cliff? If I can just add to what Don said, they take the, the ham operator reports that we get, that, we call, that are called in, they take them a hell of a lot more serious mm -hmm. and accurate than they do somebody that's on Facebook or Twitter or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, they they yeah. know... And they don't issue the sky, they don't issue the numbers anymore. Right. But if you say, if we say, here's a ham operator and wherever it is, and here's what they say, they, they believe it. Yeah. And several of them out there are ham operators themselves. Yep. But they're not on the radio unless absolutely necessary. Yeah, I don't think I've ever heard Jim on the radio, but he's got a license. He's a, yeah, he's got a license. Yeah. Zero LSX. Yeah. And uh, Melissa Bird is one. Uh, Scott, who is retired now, he was with me out there last time. And he's on. The, he's looking at the radar, and he says, "Oh wow, look at that orange dot." Well, which which button do I hit on the radio? I said, "Look, I'll teach you how to use the radio. You just tell me what that orange dot is." I mean, right. He's a retired meteorologist. Yeah. He's a ham operator that comes out there to volunteer too. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Everybody know what they're going to do? Yes. No. Everybody's off the quiet. Always had the go bag. What's that? Oh, no. Always had the go bag. Always had the go bag. Right. Yeah, if you took the like FEMA level 100 and those like 10 minutes ago. Uh huh. You take them again? No. Um. If you took them. The updated them. Yeah. Months. The updated ones you would need to do. Six months ago. Right. Um. The 100. Yeah, 100. Right, and I don't remember it's where. Not a bad idea to in the eight hundred. Yeah. No, no, it's not. In fact, um, Don, I don't know, but I was told that I know the RRT has to retake all those because yeah. supposedly ARRL is going to require that you have the new. You take. Well, you should have. Yeah, I mean, you should have new stuff, and if if. If you look, all right. So I can't even see my own stuff on here. But I've got there's there are double versions of courses where I've gone in and had to update certain things. So yeah, there's the old 100 I took, which was back in what, what was it say 2005. So that that's when I did my initial search stuff with AT&T, and then. Um, then I had to do the 100B after that and all that other good stuff. So um, when I did my FEMA professional development series courses, uh, there, there was an update here, 235B to 235C. And there's another one, I think, for 242 now, um, or no, 241A got, has a B revision. So technically, I have to go out there and update that in order to hold on to um, my PDS certificate. Um, so, yeah, you, whatever's out there right now on the website is what's current. It won't let you take something from back. So you can't screw up. So as long as you do whatever 100's out there, whatever 200's out there, whatever 700's out there, whatever 800's out there, you're, you're good to go. Those are a lot of sleepy nights. Mm -hmm. That's just page one. So, all 
All right, I think that's it. Are we good? Any other questions? So if we're going to go to the uh, classes in March, yes, and you're going to supply the book, what do we need to bring? We have to have our Well, you need to be, uh, since I'm supplying you the electronic copies of things, um, I need you to be able to either print, I, I, don't, I doubt you're going to want to print that much of a book out. So bring a computer or something. Yeah, whatever, to read the PDF on, take notes with, etc. cetera. Um, so when you send out the PDF ahead of time? So yep. Can, okay. Yeah, once you register for the class, I'll get the PDF out about um, about a week, week beforehand. Okay. And that'll be for that week's topics. And then, you know, over the course of those four weeks, we'll do the next reviews and what have you, and then I'll get you the next PDF, and then the third one, and the fourth one. And those will all cover the materials that we're going to go over in the next class and everything. Um, and then I also have a spreadsheet that has all 156 test questions on it. Um, it's an Excel format. So you can go through and take the practice test, if you will, type in the letter or the answer next to the cell, and it'll tell you if it's correct or not. It is so, it's so basic, it's a lot of common sense. So, we, we, we talk a lot in class about, um, you know, what to bring, what to do, how to act, how to talk what to expect, um, what not to do, you know, don't be that ham that shows up with grungy clothes, and, and we've all seen them at Dayton and other ham fests, right? You look around, you kind of go, whoa, whoa, and I'll stay away from that guy for a little bit. So, you know, we talk about a lot of those common sense things that, um, you know, you, you just tend to forget about something, and you're like, oh yeah, maybe I should I should do that or not do that or or something. So, uh, what about the test? The, yeah, the test. Well, we do the last day, as we do class from eight to noon on Saturdays, and then on that last Saturday, we'll do class from eight to noon, break for lunch, and then do the test after lunch. And just like a VE test, it's 15 bucks to take the test. Um, you don't have to have the class in order to sit and take the test, but if you're going to come play with us, I want to know that you've taken the class. Mm. You know, but um, and, and you don't have to have an amateur radio license to sit and take the class or take the test. What will happen is, is I'll submit all that info to the ARRL, and they basically put that in their database. And when that person becomes licensed, then that will get associated with their training record with the ARRL. Anything else? Yeah? Is there ever a chance you would do that at a time other than March? Probably. I've done them. The first year I did the class, I did it both in March and again in the fall because the demand was there because we had about 15 people or so to, to run through um, and, and the first time and then we did more of our folks in the fall that, that, that year to get everybody up to speed. If there's a desire for it, yes. Uh, my work schedule now will allow me here mid-March to, to have my weekends free and such to do something more in in the fall if there's if there's a need for it. The reason why we do it in March is to get everybody up to speed before the public service events happen, before the severe weather happens, before the need for to, to work with you know the 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 threat level, if you will, goes up with severe weather over the summer. So that's why we try to gear everything in the in, in the spring to get that in everybody's mind going forward. Plus, you've got field day coming up, which is a good application for a lot of stuff that we go over. Um, 
And so just timing-wise, that's, that's when it works out. But, but, but yes, if there's a need for, for a class in the fall, I'll certainly do one. Um, I got to drive out to Columbia tomorrow and do a class for them for about 20 people. And so, um, yeah, if there's a need, we'll do it. I'd love to do it, but I've got a baby coming sometime in the month of March. Right? My wife is not. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? Bring her along. Yeah, right. Yeah, and the ARRL offers one too, but it costs a lot of money to do it. Um, the online stuff, you tend to miss out on a lot of the group discussion and group experience stuff too. Yeah. Not to say that it's bad. It's an opportunity for that. Um, and I'm not going to look, I'm not going to look, I'm not going to look at less of you because you, you went another route. But um, you, you, you do lose that that classroom discussion that we spend a lot of time working on in the exercises and things. So, however you want to weigh it out. I've done the class both ways. Yeah. I did it online in 2007, and then I did it in class yep. last year before I got my certification to teach. Yeah. And you learn a lot more in the class. Yeah. Because people that you are in the class with will bring up scenarios and ideas and thoughts that you're not going to get out of the book. The right. It's just straight, boring information. Right. It's theory versus practice. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, really. And and so there's, there's and, and like I said, if there's a need come fall, fine. If she's expecting in March, we're at a hospital. <laughs> I mean. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to watch the two-year-old while she takes care of the newborn. Ah, I see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's going to fall. We're just trying to help. Yeah, right? <laughs> so. I've been trying to figure out a way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we got that. The Winland class in April. Um, Aries does uh, training stuff on the radio, usually once a quarter. So, watch out for that stuff and everything. You don't have to be a member to participate. I hesitate to use the word member because it brings volunteer. up the name of club and blah, 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 blah. Volunteer resource, whatever. Um, I'm sorry? Don't Are, have to be registered. Yeah, so registered. Yeah, you don't have to be registered with Aries to participate in those on air activities the that we do um, quarterly. Yeah, the Simplex exercise is on the 17th. So what that, that those details are out on SPLAries.org. But generally, what that is, is we have four simplex frequencies around St. Louis that we use, and St. Louis is divided up into zones. So like the city is zone four, south of 44, South County area is zone three, and then when you got an area between 44 and 70, and then everything north of 70 um, is another area. So we break those things out. So the idea is, is that you would test from your house how effective are you at getting or talking to other locations in, in the area on simplex. So it gives you a good idea of how well you can get out if something bad were to happen and, you know, we lose all the repeaters in town. But it gives you an idea of, of how well you're performing at home, what changes you might want to make, um, those sort of things. And then there's a repeater exercise and... Weekly message net. Yeah, the weekly message net on Wednesdays. Um, Aries has their weekly net on the H5 machine, so you can, you're welcome to check into that. Again, you don't have to be registered, and then stay for the uh, messaging net afterwards where we go over uh, ARRL radiograms and the FEMA ICS-213 forms, which when you take your 100 and 700, I don't they remember do if you're exposed to those in there or not, but the what's that? They do cover the 213. Yeah. But they don't cover the ARRL. Right. Um, but we cover both of those in the MCON class in March. So again, you start to see where it's kind of important to take the training, be exposed to that stuff. So you have at least a general reference in your head of 
where to go for things and what people are talking about.